Hello everyone, it is Wednesday afternoon on the 13th of October, I think. Anyway, this is a follow-up video on, on uh, something, okay, that I made the other day um, about gluing together 3D printed parts, okay. Well, the other video I made about this, um, these are the two sides that I glued together and started together. Um, actually, this is the, for the same card, just different sides, but um, they were original pre-production models, so to speak, that I bought from the guy I purchased the cars from. Anyway, <clears throat> as an update on that, um, I remember saying about using contact cement, okay, which can work if you get the one that is used and compatible with plastics, including polyethylene, or works on most plastics, because PLA um, is a plastic that you 3D print with, so is PETG and um, ABS, you know. So anyway, what I do, as you see here, is that this is two pieces that have been cemented together, all right, I have not soldered them, and I haven't really had to. Why? Because I'm using this. I found this at your big box hardware store. You pick one you want, whichever one, the big blue one or the big red box tool store, okay? If you get my meaning. Anyway, this is E6000. What you do is you glue it on the seam. I just put a little rivulet or a line, a line on the seam on each on one piece, and then... Held them together because you got to hold them fairly, to fairly tight, okay, and um, let it sit for anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. I let it sit for 24 hours before touching it, and as you can tell, this is not going anywhere. If I were to side of the back of it, we'd give it additional strength. And so if this was, if this was something I plan on using as a model, I would only have to go ahead and put seam filler here, or even just sand it a little bit and put seam filler, you know, Bondo, put, Bondo putty, whatever, Green Squadron putty, and sand it, and then prime it and paint it, and you wouldn't even see a line. All right, and if you wanted to solder it back here, like in my other video back here with a soldering iron, you do that too, which would give it additional strength in the back, okay? But yeah, E6000 works really well. I'm flexing this. And with the original contact cement that I used, which was Weldwood or Wildwood um, contact cement, uh, which, it would actually, under this type of flex, would snap apart, okay? Now, on to the next topic, all right? This is was a three-rail weaver gp38-2 locomotive okay um i have three of these things but this one is a was a three rail floor okay this was three rail and um it was just a floor and the body shell that's it nothing else nothing so i decided i was going to build a, car, a locomotive from the scratch up because i had no power trucks or anything so what i did was i went ahead and i bought stanton drives from Northwest short line. Move to the center of the screen here. I'm unscrewing the, the mounting nuts from the threads of the Stanton Drive truck, okay? And taking them and putting them on the side for now, okay? Why? Because um, the thing is that happens, like most of us in the model railroad hobby, we tend to lose small things like washes and small nuts and things like that. And it gets a little bit frustrating at times. Tell me I'm wrong, okay, guys? So... What I found to do is, is that these little washes that go in here, um, when they come from the factory, from Northwest Short Line, they come with a white washer that sits on a collar, okay? I'm going to pull the truck out so you can see it, okay? Um, it sits right on here, on this little thing here. You see this here, that riser before the thread? The washer sits there. Well, the thing is, some of us, like me, lose those washers, and um, I haven't been able to get replacement ones from Northwest Short Line yet, okay, because they've been busy with other things, and like a lot of other businesses, they've been affected by COVID. So what I did was I went to, took this truck literally with me, took the truck to Northwest Short Line, and went ahead, and um, went over there and started looking at washers, and I found, bingo, a drop-in replacement, all right, and what they are is... They are quarter inch flat nylon washers, white quarter inch flat, all right, that fit this shoulder piece perfectly, okay? Here's the better part, okay? When you put it on the, the body bolster that I made out of brass, I made a body bolster out of brass, okay? And as you can see it, it sits perfectly level with the body bolster. And if you look also, it gives it enough room to rotate freely, all right? Enough space so that it doesn't hit anything or bump in anything, all right, as far as the rotation of the truck, the power truck, 
on the rails or you know even on this desk would go so yep you can and also um these the um as far as using them on ho scale trucks goes that you would use a number six or a number eight i believe for that same shoulder and for the um for the the subway trucks the, the trucks i use for the subway trains which is this here okay this little buggy right bugger right here sort of bogey here it's Stanton Drive, this is actually S scale, but with O scale wheels set at O scale or OW5, one and a quarter inch between the rails, all right? Um, and um, you can see this has a washer too. That's a number 10 flat nylon washer that fits right on the same way they did on this one. It sits right on here on an S scale truck, okay? The HO scale ones would fit a number, a number six or a number eight, all right? Probably a number six, because here you have one here all right, that has a washer that came with it, all right, right here. It's an HO scale truck, all right. This is going to be put under a, um, an Imperial Hobby Productions Long Island Railroad um, M1 commuter car. I have two of them I'm going to be putting under the, under the uh, under that car for a power for a power train. Anyway, just figured I'd let you guys know that so that this way, if you lose those washers, you know, no fear really. You can go to your local big box hardware store and look for... Um, the flat nylon washers for O scale would be number it would be a quarter inch for S scale it would be number 10 for HO scale it would be like a number six or a number eight okay so just try them out and you'll see what I mean all right and you can see where it sits all right even in the flush with the shoulder and on the O scale truck it allows the shoulder to sit correctly and properly right there flush with the body bolster and still have plenty of room to rotate Okay, so anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Any comments or questions or critiques or anything, feel free to message me on YouTube or message me on Facebook if you know me on there, all right? And and I'll be putting an progress report um, in the next few days about this locomotive being wired up because the speaker's installed in the fuel tank. There's the battery that's going to power this thing. There's the adapter board for the ESU lock sound decoder, which has the sounds programmed into it. This is a board, a uh, dead wheel board from CVP Products. That's going to allow for battery operation, so it takes power from the battery and brings it up to the DCC decoder, and I can have sounds and everything. You've probably seen this before in another video, but I'm, I'm doing this better, so to speak, more refined, so it doesn't look so haphazard. <coughs> Excuse me. And I plan on putting a cab interior into the cab, which will be on this end, all right? Then I have to do the interior lighting of the shell. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. <coughs> Excuse me. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bye-bye.